Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to another Monday market watch. Let me first apologize if you hear any weird noises. My pug has just decided he wants to go have a drink of water. Nice fresh water, I probably should have known. He usually likes to sit there and lick his bollocks and all kinds of stuff as well. So don't be surprised if you hear any weird noises. If you do, this is what I have to put up with. The poor fucking bastard can barely breathe anyway. But there we go. Anyway. Let's get on with it, shall we? So, I wanted to take a look at the market and see how things have changed. Of course, we are focused on the EU-UK market here, so we should note that before we go ahead. You'll see some price up above. But I wanted to see how the uh, reveal for Toon Chaos, which I took part in, if you didn't already, so you can go check out that video. I'll put a link on the screen somewhere for you to click if you want to check that out later on. Uh, I was part of the reveal for that, and I wanted to see what kind of impact that has had on the market here in Europe. We're going to take a look at some tunes. We're going to take a look at some of the Noble Knight support, including the Infern, Inf, Infern Noble Knight stuff and the effect that that has on these things, as well as some of the other good print stuff from like Echo, Duov, all that kind of stuff from more recently, and a handful of cards that I wanted to take a look at just in general and see how the market is changing. There are a few cards that we're going to cover here today that are spiking hugely. You're going to see what they are just now, but we're not going to mess around anymore. We're going to get stuck right into the video. So if you do see me looking down during the video, I am just looking at my laptop screen, which is right in front of me. Uh, I'll try and make plenty of eye contact so that you feel a bit involved in what we're doing here. But we're going to start off with Toon Kingdom. It's got a couple of different prints going on, so I'm going to take a look at what those are doing. There is one that is considerably more expensive than the other, but neither of these are particularly cheap. People have kind of hoped that what we were going to see was a reprint of Toon Kingdom in this new set, and that isn't unfortunately what has happened now i do believe we may get another re-release coming up i don't know whether this is confirmed but there's certainly a lot of belief that we may get it in some of the legendary duelist decks or what have you um so but for now people are wanting this card people are a bit excited about playing their tunes and uh, we're seeing that reflected in the price so starting off with toon kingdom from dragons of legend uh, the kind of overall trend has shut up quite a bit the 30 day average is 23 euros if you want something in good condition first edition and uh in english you are looking at a minimum of 49 euros 99 call it 55 euros by the time you tack on your shipping and all of that kind of stuff so this is a card that has absolutely rocketed people were banking on this being in the new set potentially didn't pick these up when they were considerably cheaper uh, you know, they're now 22 plus euros more than they were before, and uh, you're being punished for the price there. It was always a possibility that this would happen. These are the kind of things you want to try and preempt, uh, but there's always a risk whenever you go into something that there's no guarantee that there's a reprint of in a new set. Ancient Millennium version. This, this is again another one of those sets that just wasn't opened. Uh, it is one of those weird ones. We always get those legendary duelist sets that they don't sell an awful lot. There's always one or two cards that are absolutely just huge in there. They get that one print. Now, it is worth noting that we are going to get a reprint of this particular set, if I'm not mistaken, in these new legendary duelist boxes. It's still a few months away, if I remember rightly. Uh, you feel free to correct me on that one. Uh, and we're seeing that a little bit in the price, but it is still a solid more or less 15 euros to pick up a single copy of a rare of Toon Kingdom. So if you want to play the deck, it's certainly not a cheap way to go. This is always the case with these kind of cult classic decks. We see it with Dark, uh, Dark Magician. We see it with Red Eyes. We see it with Blue Eyes. There's always that one or two cards that are going to cost you a little bit. And that is the price you pay to play these more casual based decks that people just want to be able to take to the locals or play against their friends with. And stuff that kind of stands the test of time as just a tried and tested fun way to play. Now, this is big numbers anyway. This is one that you kind of expect to be expensive. Toon Table of Condense, uh, Tournament Pack 6 version. So the, the price trend was around 65 euros. These have been completely bought out at that kind of level. We are now looking 180 euros for something in near mint in English. That is the cheapest available. Even more expensive as you go further along now there obviously have been other prints of this but this is definitely the value one it's worth noting that i'm not covering anything that's worth than less than like a euro on here there's not really any point that's penny stock stuff that 
you should really be able to get easy access to. What I do want to look at is the really cool rarity stuff that you're going to want to hold on to or potentially pick up in case it skyrockets and then you can either turn that over or just save yourself some money along the way. Next up, we're looking at the Shonen Jump version of Toon Dark Magician Girl. The price on this has been yo-yoing all over the place. That is usually the case with cards of this age. Uh, so we're looking at six euros for the cheapest, uh, and then it gradually goes up from there. The price trend is eight euros, so that indicates at the moment there are some that are a little bit cheaper on there. That doesn't necessarily mean that the overall price is going to come down, though. I expect, actually, that this kind of stuff will probably go up slightly again over time, where people start picking them up just because they want to have the options for the deck and that kind of fun stuff that people like to do, I guess. Uh, so expect this one to go up slightly. I don't think this is a bad price. If you are someone that is looking to pick this up, six euros a pop might not actually be a bad investment. Next up, we're looking at the notorious Magic Ruler copy of Blue Eyes. Toon Dragon. Uh, we have seen this at extortion of prices. At the moment, you can get it in good condition for around 29 euros, and that's unlimited. But let's go ahead and take a look at something a little bit further down. Now, bear in mind, again, these are all English. This is something that I stick to because it's, well, I guess it's the most universally used uh, language of card. Okay, so for something in near mint in unlim, you're looking at 52 euros. At a minimum, uh, if you want a first ed in good condition with bent edges, uh, that is 60 euros. And if you want to go for a first in good condition, you are looking at a minimum of 75 euros. Let's go ahead and see if they've got a near mint first edition and see what the price is on that. Okay, so the cheapest one for a Euro print is 130 euros. This is a well-known collector's card. This is one of those ones that's just always had really good value for the, the longest possible time. Uh, so, again, just expect this probably to continue to go up if they are in particularly good condition. Although, if you want just ones that are playable, that is possible to do on a much, much smaller budget. And next up, we're looking at the elusive Toon Cannon Soldier from Tournament Pack 6. Again, another one of these out of the park cards for price. 150 euros is the cheapest in near mint that you can get. The rest are listed at 200 euros a pop. These have completely gone in English off the market in anything better than good condition. Not really a surprise. They are particularly, particularly rare on the whole anyway. And that's what you see in the price. So next up, I wanted to take a look at some of the cards that could potentially be used in support of Noble Knights. Obviously, we've had the Infer Noble Knight stuff get released. At least a small part of it in Toon Chaos is going to be coming out. And then we can expect more in Rise of the Duelist and everywhere in between. Uh, there is a little bit of hype around this deck. It's making one of those decks that people really enjoy looking at. It's got really nice artwork. Everyone enjoys the lore behind it all. Um, you know, just they're sort of based on rich stories and old poetry and all that kind of stuff across the board. And people just love it. It's one of those decks. It's unfortunate that most of it was printed in platinum in the first place, which nobody likes. So to see some of this stuff getting nicer rarities coming out is something that is desirable. Now you can go ahead and get the Extreme Force version of Isolde for as cheap as two euros fifty if you don't mind it being unlim. If you do want to go first edition they're three euros fifty. We have had another print of this and it wouldn't surprise me if we've got another one along the way. Um, this is probably not a bad pun. I would expect that at some point we'll get a nice rarity bump for this. But for now, as an ultra for the original print, €3.50 a pop is really not so bad. It's always going to be semi-usable as well, being a generic warrior support. Of course, it has the benefit of having, having additional ability when used in Noble Knight decks. Now, I am just looking through some of the other ones that have some value and just seeing how that, that has changed over the recent few days at least um it is worth noting that not, se not necessarily all of these will be used in the infer noble builds we only have the ocg to go off at the moment but we have a kind of rough idea i'm not covering the infer noble stuff themselves because it is all pre-sale prices which means they are through the roof uh, i would never recommend doing that not unless you can get a really really good deal but we're going to go ahead and look at artorigus noble king of the noble knights fucking name uh ultimate rare is 15 euros a pop at cheapest or 20 euros if you want it in first edition this has gradually crept up it was around 13 euros before 
So we are seeing this sweep up, and that's not really a surprise. You expect more of these to disappear off the market over the next couple of weeks before we head in to people who will start to try and pick up the decks. Probably that little bit too late. That's one of the key things you can learn in the market, is if you know that there's something you want, you know that there's some support coming out, maybe it's six months away, because quite often we find out that far ahead. Wait a few weeks after the initial announcement, because it'll normally dip then. Pick everything up and keep hold of it and then when you get there you'll save yourself a hell of a lot of money especially if you intend to play the deck and especially if it's in stuff that you know that there's no chance of it being reprinted anytime soon i'm going to pronounce this probably as it was intended to be pronounced or at least the character is based on guinevere i don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced here because there's like gwen gwen hifwa it looks welsh to me uh <laughs> queen of the noble arms this is at six euros 50 a pop that is a slight increase on the overall trend however if you look at the graph itself it's actually going down that's the direction this card is heading overall so expected to continue to dip down there is a possibility we do get a backlash as mentioned but i'm not sure that it's necessarily one of those cards that sees a lot of play in the deck uh maybe it's a one-off i'm not really sure i'm not a huge noble knight fan or big player of it uh so maybe you guys can correct me on that if you do know We've got some other Noble Knight guys in Madro, Madrout, I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but €9 Euros for the cheapest in good condition, and that only goes up from there. This is a secret rare, so that is not really a surprise that we're seeing that in the price, uh, and we are going to go ahead and take a look down here. Okay, so for something in first edition in Near Mint, it is €15 Euros a pop, or if you want something in Near Mint, that is not first edition, it is also around 15 euros a pop, so you might as well just spend the extra. You are looking at a couple more euros as you go further down the list there. Probably worth spending those extra five or six euros for a playset if that's what you want, just to get them in first edition, because they'll hold a lot better value down the line. Okay, so Smoke Grenade of the Thief. No surprise, this one is continuing to rise up over time. We are seeing the overall trend go up. There has been a little bit of a yo-yo recently, but with the announced Noble Knight support and other cards that are kind of indirect support for the deck, for the Infernoble stuff, we are going to see this coming back up. This is a really, really important card in the way that the deck runs now, so don't be surprised, given the fact that this has only had two really old prints, that this is going to continue to rise up over time. Eight euros for something in good, ten euros for something in near mint at a minimum, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the other print for this now. Okay, so looking at the other print, the cheapest you can get is eight euros, we're looking at ten to twelve euros as a kind of rough guideline, but this is a definite increase. You can see the whole line going upwards over time. Expect this to continue to rise up. So we're going to take a look at a few cards that may have been impacted by the reprint announcements, stuff that wasn't publicly known uh, up until the reveal videos came out. Bamboozling Gossip Shadow was a sort of 20, 30 euro card, potentially as recently as a few weeks ago. It was one of those cards that people were starting to experiment with again. It always has a risk of being a play card. I actually thought that this was going to get banned when we had the whole, uh, what was his name? Rongo Bongo fucking combo shit going on. That stuff. When uh, when he got killed off, I thought we actually might see this go because I felt like it had a potential to be problematic down the line. It's starting to see a little bit of play again, but it's not really doing anything too crazy. But because people are playing it, of course, we're seeing that in the price. However... As you can see here, a clear trend down as soon as people found out that this was coming out. Nosedive. Uh, not really a surprise at all, to be honest with you. This may actually be worth picking up in a nicer print before the price goes up again. Because naturally what happens with these things, people go ahead and get the cheap copies. Or they sell off all the secrets really, really cheap. Or the nicer prints at least really, really cheap. And then people will pick them up and hold them. And then a few weeks later, a few months later, when people want to play it in the good rarity now, the price goes up because the demand goes up and the supply is choked out. People need those rarity bumps. They can't be playing the bad rarities at regionals. So I was very interested in taking a look at Chaos Emperor Dragon, the jump version of this. Of course, this has actually pretty much held its value. It stayed more or less the same. I guess this is technically the highest print of the errata version of this card. It's basically unplayable but it's got one of them it's got something about it hasn't it it's probably the most feared card ever printed in the tcg certainly up there in terms of how insane it was at the time uh, how insane it would still be if it wasn't having the errata in place people will want to play this just for a bit of fun a bit of nostalgia um the price has remained pretty solid something i didn't actually expect to see i thought maybe we'd see it come down a little with the lower rarity print coming out but people are fans of the card and it's holding in the price. I wanted to take a look at Pot of Extravagance and it's pretty clear which direction this is trending in. It is a must 
own card. It is a staple. It's one of those cards that's always going to have some good value. At the moment, 40 euros for the cheapest Unlim, 45 euros for the cheapest first edition. It's actually probably worth spending the little bit extra if you want something a really nice rarity. I do think that they'll probably end up settling a little bit lower than they are now, so maybe, I guess, wait a little bit longer until the print's out. But we may see some yo-yoing along the lines as people try and pick up better rarities. Uh, in the near future, they'll, they'll get the low rarity one they want to bump up, that kind of thing. And then we may see it settle a little bit over time something maybe to hold out on i don't really know uh but if you want to keep the original rarities it probably wouldn't be a bad thing to hold on to the amount of value that these are going to go down isn't going to be significant let's be real about that i think at the lowest you're probably going to be looking around 30 euros 35 euros for something in first edition uh and the unlimbs could go down to about 20 i guess based on how the other pots have performed over time and we're looking at some of the new print stuff now. So we've got a Nimadorn Arcasaur, another one I'd like to keep an eye on. This has gradually come down a little bit since its initial release. It is worth noting that in Europe we've had Echo for a few weeks now, whereas I believe in the US it's actually only just dropped in the last week or two. So we are slowly seeing those prices come down, not super quick or anything like that. We are seeing some big movers We'll get to those in a minute. But a Nimadorn Arcasaur sat around the 25 to 30 euro mark, which is what it was a few weeks ago. It's one of those cards that, again, people are playing as like a one-of. Some people like the whole stuff in three in there and just getting to pill or searching out relevant targets. Personally, I only play one, and one is perfectly sufficient for most people's builds. And as a result, the demand and the supply is kind of off kilter, and they are plenty accessible. Next, we'll take a look at Access Code Talker, another card that is just rocketing through the goddamn roof. Lots of people likening this to the modern version of Dark Arm Dragon. That's a big claim to fame. We're talking about a tier zero deck once upon a time. But Access Code Talker is a very, very powerful boss monster. In a lot of ways, it has Power Crab Boral Sword as people's go to link for Beat Stick. Um, performs slightly different duties, but Access Code Talker is a really really strong option you can set it up quite well and protect it you are flat out ruining your opponent it becomes massive it can pop cards uh, it's super easy to make what's not to like and we're seeing that in the price range i think this will be a must-have card going into your extra deck something that you probably want to pick up sooner rather than later to my knowledge there is difficulty getting echo in europe at the moment that may be wrong information that i've been given but that may be part of the reason why the price is going up so fast Next, looking at Ghost Mortar and Moonlit Chiller. Much like the other hand traps, I did put some money on this. At least mentally, on this going up. This was one that I fully expected to go up. It was very, very cheap for a while, and I expected it to see some at least experimentation. It is a hand trap. There's always going to be a chance that it gets played. And much like the others, I think it will have its formats which are really relevant and really not so relevant, as we see all the time. And the price will yo-yo accordingly at the moment though the overall trend is continuing up we're looking probably around 30 euros a pop before long as a pretty standard you can get them as cheap as 25 at the moment now might not be a bad time to punt on them garden rose maiden one that i've been tracking for a few weeks continues its upward trajectory we are seeing it go a little bit like this while it's getting towards the top is it plateauing who knows we'll see over the coming weeks we may cover it again about eight to ten euros is the going rate we have seen it price trend at closer to 12 overall so that may be an indicator that it is starting to plateau it's one of those cards that's really really good to have it's got a really really good ability it goes really well into some combo variants and i think it is one of those cards that we're going to continue to see experimented with at least in a small amount it's also worth noting that again it's only had the one print i don't know whether this is being reprinted in the new set that we were talking about those little collection boxes if it's not that may push the price even further up over time Next, I wanted to look at some of the combo shenanigan cards at least continue on that line of thought. Lincross is continuing to plummet down. I did not see this coming. Me personally, I thought we were going to maybe see it start to scoop back up. That may be the case once competitive play resumes, but I don't think it's actually a particularly hard card to pull necessarily in the boxes. But it's one that everyone needs a copy of. And maybe that's why the price is sort of a, a medium point. Around that €13 Euros mark is the cheapest you can get it. I probably would advise punting on this. Even if it does go down a little bit, I do honestly think that this will go up again at some point, probably back up towards the 20 mark once physical play resumes. If you can't get hold of packs to try and pull it yourself, if that's what you're into, then definitely go ahead and look at this card. 
Mecha Phantom Beast, Auroradon, super cheap. This is like penny stock stuff at the moment. It's super relevant at the moment. It is a token generator. And I think as long as O-Line is in the game, this is going to be somewhat usable. That's the problem, though, is that the crutch is on O-Line, which, although it is getting a reprint soon, so it probably won't get hit just yet, when it does get hit, this card probably won't really see the same level of play that it is at the moment. It is a generic, or at least semi-generic, uh, token generator so that is something that will have some viability going forward but that's probably what's stopping it from going up quite a significant chunk is that crutch on a card that is likely to get hit on the list next we're looking at halka fibrax or needle fiber as most people prefer to call it the big shenanigan card at the moment the actual overall price again is just gradually coming down we're around the 19 euro mark at the moment again i feel like once you get into physical play and people need to own this card it will probably scoop back up, especially once the print runs out, because I think it may be a while before we see this reprinted, if ever at all, because it may very well just get mullered on the ban list, and then we never see it again. And potentially that's what we're looking at happening within the next couple of lists, although, as you know, things are a little bit up in the air at the moment with physical play. People are using these for their remote tools, or they want to do like physical profiles, or want to play with their friends or family or whatever. They need the physical card, and I think the demand for this will increase over time again once that print runs out and lastly we're looking at three different cards that i kind of just wanted to take a note at how they were doing on the market so we're looking at borrowed savage dragon this is one that is rife with reprint speculation this is one that a lot of people expected to see reprinted already so far it has dodged that and that is why the price has been so high it's become really really important in the, in the current game the question is is how important will it be in future iterations it is a generic kind of negate Level 8 Synchro is always strong. It is a big beat stick. It is a dark dragon. It has so much going for it. It's a fantastic card. But will we see it reprinted? There is a very good chance that we see it in the tins. And that is why the price is slowly starting to come down. With no expected real sort of physical play before the tins are out. At least on no serious level. A lot of people are looking to start cashing in on this while it's still got some value. And that is why we're seeing that overall price trend come down. Our penultimate card for today is Starleash Safer. Some people expected this again to be in this new Chaos set. Doesn't really surprise me that it wasn't. It was only fairly recently printed. 21 euros a pop is actually not too bad. We've seen it go as high as 25. But it doesn't seem to go much below that. It's one of those cards that's always got some generic viability. I actually expect once this new set comes out that this may go up. Because people may kind of mess around with some Chaos builds. In particular with Dragons. As is quite common to do so. Just a really, really cool card. It's still only got the one print. So don't be surprised if this goes up again. The fact that you can get them from around 21, 22 euros a pop isn't too bad. And I don't think it's too big a risk to potentially pick up it. Maybe a while before we see this get reprinted. And our last card for the day. This was a tip off from Grandpa. If you know, you know. If you don't, don't ask the question. So he pointed out that these were selling like hotcakes. So if you don't have them, now may be a good time to start picking them up. Because... When are we going to see them? I guess in the tins potentially, but people want these. They want them now and they want their Shonen Jump versions, which are hold nice value over time. You can get them as cheap as 10 euros. They are trending up towards the 13, 14 euro mark on the whole. Not a bad card. It's actually got some really cool viability. It's a nice fun one to play with. Should you pick up your copies? Well, if you want the better print, the one that will hold value over time, this is probably the one to go for. So that is it for today's Market Watch. Thank you very much for joining me here. If you haven't already, you should definitely consider hitting subscribe. In the future, if you'd like to see me cover any specific cards, maybe a whole archetype, whatever, then go ahead and drop it down in the comments. Let me know. I'm easy enough to find on, in particular, Facebook, but social media in general. Very, very easy to get hold of. So if there's anything you want me to cover at all, do let me know through there i also do a bunch of other stuff not just market watches like deck profiles combo videos uh crash courses to teach you the basics of how to play decks uh, they're fairly popular at the moment and a whole bunch of other stuff so if there's anything that you want me to cover anything that you want me to do i'm always always open to suggestions thank you very much again for checking in guys and i will see you in the next one thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content i put together for you enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.